Ready on coverage, SBC News. Limited direct classes resume with restrictions. Batangas Museum prizes for Mabini. Taylor Swift's folklore giving us an astounding album of the year. MGB intensifies advocacy for eco-friendly mining practices. Hero Lassie defeats the Bulls. Leaning Tower of Pisa. Pinoy Pop Hitmakers SD19 enters Billboard 2021. Monsoon brings rainy weather over Palawan. Determined and dependable, a coverage you can count on. Always ahead, always taking the lead. This is Societies Beyond Coverage. Good day, Philippines. Here we bring light to the latest news around the globe. This is your anchor, Ron Paolo Rabino. Chrisette Villegas. For, for SBC News. News. And for headline news, limited direct classes resume with restrictions. According to the World Health Organization, the Philippines is the last country to resume face-to-face -face classes for two years after the pandemic. Some areas joined the preliminary run which approximately lasted for only two months, approved by Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte. As classes reopen, more guidelines are expected to ensure including mass hiring of nurses, vaccination, and weekly antigen tests. The Commission in Higher Education stated that it is not discriminatory to just allow fully vaccinated students. It intends to protect students against COVID-19. They also stated that vaccinated and unvaccinated students can join in-person classes for the reason that it requires much more tests and there's a possibility of spreading the virus in a short period. DepEd declared that plastic barriers and face shields are not required amidst the implementation of face-to-face -face classes. DepEd Director Joyce Andaya sets a reminder to observe health protocols inside the school premises. The government is speeding up its campaign to teach small-scale miners how to process gold using more environmentally friendly methods and technology to improve their capacity to do so. Small-scale miners must avoid using mercury, which can be damaging to both humans and the environment. According to Director Leo Serena of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources Mines and Geosciences Bureau, he stated that an information, education, and communication campaign will be launched in the next six months to target areas where small-scale mining is expanding. He stated that the MGB will begin training scale miners in Agusan del Norte next week. Additionally, according to Sereno, the campaign will ideally result in building the environmentally friendly and financially viable custom mill in the area in preparation for the establishment of Minahang Bayan. Taylor Swift won Album of the Year for Folklore at the 63rd Grammy Awards. This marks their 11th career Grammy win and third album of the year win. Here's Sofia Kagitla reporting live in Los Angeles Convention Center. Yes, Ron. The album Folklore earned five of Swift's six Grammy nominations. This is talk with reference to the specific of Danny Gredit inside of teenagers. In releasing Folklore, Swift was clear and direct about her intent and her work. She shared the names of all the major collaborators she worked with. Pop producer and longtime musical partner Jack Antonoff who she called Musical Family. Her musical heroes, The Moody Rock Band, The Nationals, Aaron Zessner, and indie god Justin Vernon of Bon Iver, a mysteriously named collaborator called William Bowery. Here's a statement from the singer after winning the award. But I want to thank I want to thank all of my all of my collaborators on the stage. I want to thank um, Sir Virginia. I want to thank um, Justin Burnham. I'm so excited to meet you someday. Um, Joe, who is the first person that I play every single song that I write, and and um, I had a best time writing song with you in quarantine. I want to thank um, I want to thank James, Ines, and Patty, and their parents who are the second and third people that I play every new song that I write. 
um, but mostly the fans, you guys met us in this imaginary world that we created. And we can tell you how honored we are forever by this. Thank you so much and thank you for the Recording Academy. We'll never forget that you did it for us. Thank you so much. Folklore also received widespread critical acclaim centering on his emotional weight, poetic, lyricism, and relaxed pace. In addition, the folklore broke the Guinness World Record for the biggest opening day on Spotify for an album, The Female Act. Once again, this is Sophia Hagitla reporting for SBC News. Anyone from the class? I'm afraid of being judged by others. So even when I know what to do in a difficult situation or how to answer to a simple question, I constantly hesitate to ask. Now, I will begin to believe in myself that I can. Yes, I'm smart. I don't even care about my mental health in order to meet my parents' and everyone else's expectations. So, I'll choose not to be hard on myself for I can do whatever I want if I just believe in myself. People are my biggest fear. I don't have the confidence to perform in front of a large crowd. So now, I'll seize this opportunity to show my talent. Be brave. Face your fear. Don't let yourself stop you from doing things you want. And we're back. Elaja, the third generation Mabini, descendant to Mabini's brother Monico, worked in the Shrine's Museum for 42 years to guiding tourists and hopes that more people, especially young ones, will visit the Mabini Shrine and the other historical sites in our country. Here is Janil Malakaman to bring us the news. The museum was built on June 23, 1956 on a 1.1 hectare lot purchased by the government from about four Mabini households. The National Historical Commission of the Philippines restored the buildings in July 2014 in time for Mabini's 150th birthday into an interactive and modern museum. The Mabini Museum now has seven galleries including an audiovisual room, a stereo copy room containing duplicates of Philippine Revolution images from 1896 to 1898, push-button exhibitions, and a holographic show Mabini. In 2015, 121,669 people visited the Mabini Museum, which is currently the largest of the Philippines' 22 historical shrines and sites, up from an average of 25,000 visitors a year before the reconstructions. The Mabini Museum now is looking forward for more visitors for the coming days and years. Once again, this is Janelle Malakaman, SBC News. The Bulls were defeated by the Heat with a score of 107-104. Gabe Vincent scored 20 points off the bench to fill in for Tyler Hero, who was unstable to play due to illness. Here is Jerome Mercado reporting live. One of the Bulls star players, Zach Levine, struggled on scoring on that game and had one of his worst game of the season in terms of scoring. But the Bulls didn't quit, though with DeMar DeRozan, the second option of the team in terms of scoring, making one last push as part of the game-high 28-point effort. DeRozan recorded a minus one and a solid defensive possession that ended with Butler missing a contested three-point shot that led to a long rebound and a DeRozan layup to cut Miami's advantage to 102 to 99 with 25.9 seconds to play. Unfortunately, a nifty inbound play by Eric Spolstra seed led to a Kai Lori layup to put Miami up with around 15 seconds to play, erasing any last shreds of hope of a Bulls comeback. I'm here with Alex Caruso for a quick after match interview. It was obviously a close game. Could you tell me the difference between your team and your opponent? It's Miami Heart basketball, they know can play physical. They know can play really good but not dirty. They can play rough or defense on you. They're gonna play a good job in executing and continue to executing foot pressure on the paint, I think. Thank you for sparing your time with us today and congratulations on your win. Once again, this is Jerome Mercado reporting live on SBC News. And good day. 
the faster our priority, we give justice to your curiosity. The latest news in trivia spotted only here on Trivia Center. I am Shane Samayo, giving you the latest and most credible news for today. Did you know? The well-known Leaning Tower of Pisa is a church's bell tower located in Pisa, Italy. Its construction clay are weak and unstable. All of that may have been a faulty foundation with 3 meters and caused the inclination. That concludes the trivia for today. On the very day of April 21, 2021, SB19 created a history for the first Filipino artists, and in fact, the first Southeast Asian artists, to have their board name appear on the nomination of the 2021 Billboard Music Awards. Liza, take it away. On November 4, SB19 latest single, Bazinga, occupied 15 spots in the last 24 hour chart and rock 28 in the last 7-day chart of Billboard Hot Trending Songs. The group made it to the Top Social Artist category nomination and competed for the honor pit against four other finalists, Blackpink, Ariana Grande, BTS, and Seventeen. We made it at it! The group exclaimed on social media in response to the nomination, which was announced late Thursday night. This year's Billboard Music Awards have nominated us for Top Social Artist. The band is just starting to mark their name on every side of the world. And during their interview with Tony Gonzaga, they attempted to be better as many people are now expecting a lot from them. Meanwhile, SB9 has celebrated its third anniversary as a group. A two-day concert titled our zone was held last November 27 and 28 as a part of boy group celebration along with the fans. Congratulations SB19 and happy third anniversary! That's all for Showbiz News. This is Liza Trix Nibodan, SBC News. Hey there, Palawan will experience cloudy and rainy weather as the monsoon trough remains the dominant weather system in the country. The Philippine Atmospheric Geophysical and Astronomical Services Administration said on Saturday. A monsoon trough is a portion of the tropical convergence zone where low pressure areas usually form. While the monsoon trough prevails nationwide, Metro Manila and the rest of the country will experience fair weather although there are changes of isolated rains due to the localized thunderstorms stated by Pagasa's daily weather forecast, issued at 4 p.m. Meanwhile, no gale warnings was placed in any of the waters nationwide, as the rest of the country is said to have a slight to moderate sea condition with 0.6 to 2.1 meters of waves, according to the State Weather Bureau. Once again, this is Aaron James Landicho, SBC News. Determined and dependable, a coverage you can count on. Always ahead, always taking the lead. This is Society's Beyond Coverage. Your anchor, Ron Paolo Rabino. Chrisette Villegas. For, For SBC News.